Hello, hello everybody. Uh, it's Christmas afternoon and I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday, whatever you're into. <laughs> but, yeah, I know my Christmas is definitely different this year compared to normal years. So first Christmas, my grandma passed away this summer. And then with the whole COVID thing, my parents are getting elderly. My dad has health problems. And none of us have had it in our family. We definitely know people. The school's been open and closed and open and closed all the time whenever they have an outbreak. So, we just, same thing we did as at Thanksgiving this year. We just sat at home and had an extra nice dinner. <laughs> did presents in the morning. So, hopefully everyone else had an enjoyable holiday. And... This is my guppy pond, of course. <laughs> Little guppies. But I'm pretty excited about something going on here. My first still nebula fry are coloring up. And this guy looks Pretty cool, if you can get close enough. And my thumb will focus on him. Where you at, bud? There's a couple of them. That's the dad, because I think that there's still, I think one of them passed. But these guys are ancient, ancient, ancient. Like, probably about two years old. <laughs> they lived in the tank on the floor. Or, not the tank on the floor, but the second tank up with no heater last winter. And they did fine. I mean, they didn't really breed, but... That guy right there. The body, I don't have a certain way. I am not a shield guppy breeder. <laughs> I just go for what I like. So I got these off of Valley Fish years ago. Like three, three years ago probably at least. And he's just talking about how mine looks so much different than his. But. Pretty excited about these guys. I think these old dudes are, they might not be able to get the job done anymore because I had a couple of these females in here that, and they dropped empty eggs. So, but yeah, that one might be, that's one of the ones that dropped empty eggs. This is the one spinning the tank. It's just a speck of color on the tail, base of the tail there. And a little hint of something on the dorsal. But these females are usually pretty plain. He's getting rambunctious. He's going after the ladies. Oh, yeah. He'll be getting the job done. Old grandpa's can't do it. He's getting it done. He's, he's awesome. 
I can't wait to see what he ends up being. How that tail ends up developing. That body is amazing. Not so much this guy, he's cool. Gave him a chance. We'll see what happens. Now these guys just got really hammered with some meds. Because still a few signs, all the guppy tanks did. There's still a few signs of some parasite issues. So they, got, they had a couple weeks off. And I did Levamisol and Finbendazole. So they're in the middle. They just got their first Finbendazole dose. Then they'll get another one Sunday. Another one Tuesday. And water will be changed on Friday. I and mean, then I wanted to wait a couple more weeks because I was pretty hard on them doing it three weeks in a row. But just to fin bend this all, I didn't do the famous all three weeks in a row. I just did the famous saw that first time. So they haven't had a full go of Levamisol in a while. And like, they didn't like it too much. I've had, I've had a couple females die. I think they might have been still struggling with the parasite and there's some kind of issue with them passing it. So, still almost to have it beat. I like how big and fat these guys are. So we've got it beat. It's just a few little things here and there. A few white stringy poops. Got one that's gone gimp in here. Got to get him out. Alright, what else is cool to look at around here? What are we going to talk about? Oh, here we go. When I gave up on the, I think it, what was it, the blue steel line, I took my selected, I selected my most favorite male and my three best females. And made a special breeding tank that the, I've always just colony bred these guys. And always just picked out the bad ones, picked out the bad ones. That's what I want. So this is the guy I've gone with. It's a hard choice. That fish that first fish I show him on the tank above was definitely in the running. So I've, been, I've had these guys almost four years now. Now, the females may not be the absolute best, but these darker females are the ones most likely to give me the traits in the males that I'm after. So, like the dark coloration and the big or big pectoral fans. Not dumb, not quite dumbo. But at least black. Some of them are dumbo. Some of them do have dumbo pecs, but. At least go for black, and bigger the better, you know. The females that look better have more de have a more refined patterning mosaic pattern in their tail they produce the, 
in my line they always produce the light colored lighter colored males without the dark pectoral fans this guy has the sh shimmering body and the dark pecs and that's a rare combination he's got the dark coloration but he's got the light almost I don't know if I'd call him metal head but not definitely not a metal head but that platinum I don't know I'm not a professional guppy breeder I'm a hobbyist sharing my experience and these are the guys this one here I really liked him he's getting old now but So got some young ones coloring up. These guys take forever to color up. He looks really good in that light. He's a little old, nicked up a little bit, but he still looks pretty good. This guy has some promise, I think. See how he's got the, the sheen on his body. Said, I just go for what I like. I have no intentions. It's more of an art, not a science to me. So, <laughs> in my eyes, a guppy breeding. Let's see what else can I look at. Let's take a look. These are the half black green, that gigantic drop I had. Probably like five weeks ago, or I, I don't even remember. But they're growing up. I was going to be a boy, I think. Yeah. They're really starting to starting to color up. Growing up to be big, strong, healthy fishies. <laughs> and we got what up? Some of the koi's I've gotten here now. I've got them spread out in other tanks now, but the king koi's. And these are just some panda fry. Whenever I find fry, newborn fry. In the in the 29 gallon tank. There's one, he's getting a bent spine. All right, good. There's like three or four in here, I think. And yeah, he's a gimp. That ain't good. I just throw him in the pond. There's one. Yeah, he's, he's plenty big enough to go in the main tank now, but. I'm thinking about, cause this is, this tank is out here in the open. There's the TV. And then all the other tanks are back there. Like this. So unfortunately, these tanks don't really get any enjoyment. They're just <coughs> functional tanks, you know, but I sit right here and sit and stare at this. Every time walking by, so these things get enjoyed 
So instead of these, using these tanks as fry tanks, I'm thinking about using all these as my breeder tanks so I can enjoy four lines. The breeders, the best of the best. That's what I'm definitely going to be doing. And then use the those side tanks over there for fry grow outs and sorting them and all that. But keep the the main breeders in these twenties. Probably do like seven or eight females and a couple males for each line. Then when I see the fry, scoop them out, put them in the fry tank. So, just a quick little tear of some guppy stuff. I put one down in here. She looks like she's getting close to dropping. And the three breeder baskets I have for this line is already occupied. So, she's, she is the only fish in here. <laughs> King Koi female. I did a, like a 90% water change. That's one of the reasons why I did the parasite treatment, even though I wanted to. I had extra day off of work. And spacing these things out over the course of the week when I'm gone out of town for work more times than I'm home. So, more times than not, I'm living in a hotel room for work. So, some things are hard to do, so I have to have an extra day off where I have actually have time to do the all the water changes needed. And there's like Three million <laughs> shrimp in here. And these shrimp are tough because these these guppies get bombed. <laughs> I I hit these guys hard with meds, trying to get rid of all the, these parasites. And at first, when the tank's not used to getting hit with meds that hard, a lot of shrimp do die. But then the ones who don't die are tough, and the next time you do it, you'll have a few more dead ones, but not that many. Then after that, every once in a while, I'll find a dead one. I think I saw a dead one in here when I was changing the water. They hate that Levamisol. There's definitely less shrimp in here than there used to be, but... These shrimp are just... Coals. For guppy, guppy snacks <laughs> in this tank. And up here, I have there's not really a huge demand for snowball shrimp, so I just end up having thousands and thousands and thousands. Well, maybe not thousands and thousands, but definitely at least several hundred in here before I started putting guppies. Well, even when I put guppies in here, these snowballs, they're so tough. They get bombed with all these guppy meds. And they just keep making more. And, all right, there's another one there. This is supposed to be a fry grow out. But I'm waiting on fry. And then, oh, we'll take a look over here. It's a little bit cloudy. A little bit cloudy from the meds. This line in particular, like most of the guppies, the, the meds don't even bother them. Not even a little bit. These guys are sensitive to levamisole. Well, and the uh, um, and the midnight blue moss cows. These lines come from the same breeder. Keep back, quit babbling on. I'm sure everyone quit watching 18 minutes ago, but 
He stuck around. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Everyone be safe. Bye.